Hello Tinkerers and welcome to this video. Today we're going to run through the basics of Tinkercad, look at the different areas within the project and then hopefully build ourselves a nice little hut in a forest and work on the basics of Tinkercad. So first off, once you've hit create new design, you're bringing one to this area and this is your work plane. This is the main area that you're going to design and build anything you want in Tinkercad and it is in three dimensions by holding the right mouse button you can look around and move around the work plane to varying different areas. What you'll notice in the top left hand corner as well a little cube moves with you at the same rotation so that tells you what you're looking at. If you're looking at the top, front, left, right, even from the bottom and all the way on. You can click on the cube to move to different perspectives of the work plane. So if you want to have a look at the right hand side directly from the right, you can click on that. If you want to click from above and it'll take you around the different corners of the space and allow you to view the work plane from different areas. Also on the left hand side is your perspective area. So obviously we can zoom in and out. We can look at different spaces and we can basically pull it to home. So if you've got it on a strange place and you don't know what you've done, click on home and it brings you all the way back to the start with the correct perspective. What's nice and easy if you want to reset your project. In the top left hand corner, we've got some basics of copy, paste, duplicate and bin. And then we've also got the wonderful buttons of undo and redo. And then above that, we've got our name. So first off, I want to click on that and change my name. I'm going to build a house today. So I'll just change it to house and keep myself up to date with what I'm doing. Across on this side, we've got our themes. We can have different themes. We're going to stick with this theme today. Then we've got a few little tools about aligning and grouping and also mirroring. We'll get onto them in a later projects, but they are important to note at the top there. We've also got our work plane options. So we can look at the work plane. We've got rulers or notes if we want to bring on a ruler to check the size of things or bring on our notes. Or we can also share our work, export and import. They will become useful as your project progresses, but we won't be using them in today's video. Just a little mention down the bottom, we've got our grid options. This just basically tells us the size of each grid. So each little square is one millimeter at the moment, and that's what I want. I can obviously change that to different scales if needed but generally speaking I stick with a one mil grid so there I've got and then finally I've got my shapes and symbols across here right at the top I've got my menu that allows me to select different things and there is a massive range of all the different shapes making bits components that you can add into your plane but today we're going to just stick with the basic shapes and down here, I've got lots of different types of basic three-dimensional shapes. And these are all the ones I need for today. So, let's build myself a hut and a house. How am I going to do that? Well, for a house, I could start with a nice basic square. Or for a hut, I could start with a nice cylinder. They're going to be my base of my house. And then, on my house, I always have a roof. So, I've got a roof. Here's my roof for my little house or a cone shape. I could have a roof for my little hut. Thing is, I've got my house here. I've got my roof here. I want to try and get my roof on top of my house. Well, how do I do that? I move around and make sure I'm always looking from different angles. I've got this up arrow just here and I can bring it up to try and put it on top of my house. Here we go. Pick it up and try and move it on. Here we go. That looks like my roof has got a, my house has got a roof on, but does it? If I look from a different angle, oh no, my house has actually got a floating roof. I don't want that to happen. So let's bring it from this angle. Let's from look from a different angle. Let's bring it around. Let's fit it on. There we go. Is my house got a roof on yet? Let's have a look again. Oh no, it's floating again. That's the problem with 3D printing and 3D perspective is basically Getting things to go on top of one another and fitting it all together is absolutely important. It's one of the first things we need to learn. So how can I do that? Well, first off, I need to know how big my cube is. So I go onto my corners, it's 20 by 20 and it's 20 high. It makes it a perfect cube. Well, the thing is, at the moment, my roof is floating 34 off the ground. Well, this is 20 high, I only want it to be 
20 off the ground. So I bring it down to 20. So I can delete that and just put in 20 and it will bring it down automatically. So it's going to be perfectly the same as move. You can see how now it's just sitting perfectly in line. Now, how can I get them two to be in line with each other? I did mention earlier there's an align tool up here. Now, I can't click on it at the moment. It's because I haven't got both bits selected. So I can either do it two ways. I can select one, hold shift and select the other. I've got two selected or I can click drag my little red box over them two and select them both. I've got to be really careful not to grab anything else because if I select it too far and it brings it all together and I don't want everything. So I just click select and just make sure I've selected them two or click on one, hold shift down, click on the other one and it brings them both together. And then I can go up to my align tool, click on align and then these are the objects are ways I can align it. So I want to align it in the middle. So it's aligned that way and also in the middle that way. And there you go. Look, my roof has gone top of my house. My house has got a nice roof. I'm looking at it from different angles and I've got a perfect roof. And the same goes for my cone and my cylinder. So I need to have a look at how big my cylinder is. It's 20 again. So again, I want to pull it off the ground 20. So I can do that really carefully and try and get 20. Sometimes it's really hard, but I can just click on that, press 20, and then it's definitely perfectly on 20. Thing is, if I'm looking at it from just about there, it looks like it's on top. But if I look from any other angle, it's definitely nowhere near. So again, select both of them, bring on the align tool, align in the middle, and then align again there. And I've got my hut and my roof perfectly on top. What's really good then is I can select them both and I could group them together. That means if I've grouped them together, that I can change the dimensions of this one and it will always be on top. Thing is, sometimes I will quite like a green roof with a red house. Thing is, if I make this any bigger, so I make it a little bit bigger, 60, let's make it 65 that way and 30 that way. Obviously, my roof doesn't follow at the same point. So I could either do that and I could go and click on that again and I could go 65 this way and 30 that way and it would keep it nice and on top. Or I can again select both. If I select both, then I can move them both at the same time. It's just something to be nice and careful of. So I've got a nice hut and a nice house. Well, obviously I need to do a door. Door would be nice. What color door should I have? So I need another box. First off, then every time, if you've been noticing, every time I bring a shape on, this appears. This is kind of my control. It has my radius, my steps, my length, my width, my height of each one. So I could automatically select it on here if I don't want to move it on my work plane. It also allows me to turn anything into a hole or a solid. And when I click on solid, I can choose it to be a different color. So I'd like a nice pink door. Why not? Always love a nice pink door. Now I could try and make a nice pink door by putting it down and then I've got them so I just click on a corner and it allows me to do the width and length and then if I want my height I grab the top box and I can squeeze it down and then I can work on this get my door to about the right shape and then I need to pick it up and move it hopefully into my house where would I like my house there we go if I'm not quite happy with it, I can click on it and I can use the arrow keys on my keypad to adjust it slightly. If I want to be a bit more precise, I can also slightly uh, tilt it and raise the game if I feel that is necessary. What else does my house need? Well, my house needs some windows. So how could I add some windows? I can bring another box on. Now I want to make it this time, I want my windows to be nice and square. So if I bring it down to let's say seven high and I want these to be seven and then seven so click on that seven and seven and if I keep everything nice and seven I've got a nice small cube I actually want it to be slightly thinner so I click on it again and just change that number to let's say four it's a nice thin window I want my windows to be blue don't I, I want blue windows here we go now I want to put my window on the side of a house. Well, how can I put it on the side of a house? If you notice, every time I go up here and I've got it selected, there is a this curved arrow. So I click on this curved arrow, pick it up, click, select, pick on the curved arrow, and I can change the degrees that it moves. So I want to change it to 90 degrees and it will flick all the way around. Or I can pick it up 
and I can drag it by freehand. The problem is it goes once every degrees. So I hold shift and it will go to every 45. And you see how I can holding shift I can move it around at 45 degree angles. Yeah, and it makes my life a lot easier to move it around at 45. And then I've got 45, let go. And I've got my window nicely in its place. Put that in, bring it off the ground. I can look at that. I don't want to on the ground. So I pick up my middle circle, bring it up. I've got my window nicely in the middle of a house. Once it's nicely in the middle of a house, well, I could also select it and I could move it across because I don't want to move it across using my arrow keys. Get it on nice on the side and then I want two of them. So I just go up, duplicate, click it once. It's duplicated. It doesn't look like anything's happening. But then if I move one away from the other, using my arrow keys, there you go. I've got two windows on the side of my house. Absolutely fantastic. What a wonderful thing. So I've got a front door. I've got two windows on the side of my house. How looking wonderful. I could try and put a chimney in. How could I have a chimney? Well, let's grab another box. I want to make this box tall and thin, don't I? So let's make it nice and thin. And make it nice and tall. What chimney? A chimney is always a black chimney, isn't it? So I make that one black. And then I pick it up. And I can just move it inside my house. There we go. It's looking good. It's a bit fat. So I just click on the corners. Make it nice and thin. I can move it to the back of my house. So it looks nice. Is it a bit too tall? If it's a bit too tall, I can click on the top one and bring it down a little. There you go. What a lovely house I've got coming along. Obviously, you can add as much detail as you want. You can start adding doors. You can start adding windows and really kind of go and be adventurous with your house. And I'd love to see some pictures of your houses coming along. Well, let's look at this one as well. It's precisely the same. I could steal this door, duplicate it. And I don't want a pink door anymore. I want a green door for my hut. And it's just picking up my door and putting it in. Finding a nice place for my dorm. And there you go. I've got a nice hut with a door. And that's the basics of Tinkercad. If you can come up with some great ideas, I'd love to see them. But there's how to make a nice little hut and a nice little house. Good luck trying out. And hopefully you can build some wonderful houses in Tinkercad.